There are some things that you can do very well in Photoshop, such as make very careful selections of irregularly shaped objects. And there are some things you can do very well in Illustrator. Uh, today we're going to look at working back and forth between Photoshop and Illustrator. We're going to start with um, selecting and masking in Photoshop, and then we're going to create a path based on that selection and jump it over to Illustrator. Now this is one of the strong, strong points in, in working with programs that are connected. We'll see this when we're working with video as well. The ability to jump back and forth between programs using uh, media created in one. So here I have a picture of our Prime Minister and what I want to do is just select the background and drop it off. So this is going to be relatively easy to do because the, the background is a solid color. It's not, you know, an ideal color. It's pretty close to the blue of his suit jacket, but it's not going to be overly difficult. To do this, I'm going to use a combination of tools. I'm going to use the quick select tool to start. Though, um, if you want, you could also start with the magic wand tool. Either one is going to be fine here. And then I am going to go over using the select and mask option. Select and mask is something that is new with this version of Photoshop and it's kind of the evolution of what was uh, refined selection in past versions. So if you're familiar with that, select and mask has replaced it. So I am going to go in and start by just kind of dragging this over the background and I can see already that I've got a little bit too much um, selected. So I'm going to switch to the subtract from selection. And remember you can do this temporarily by holding down the option key that will switch you over to the subtract from selection. And often you might find you have to do this you know, quite, quite often when you're working, you might have to go in and make an adjustment. Now, the closer we can get this selection before we convert it into a mask, the easier that process is going to be. And also one of the reasons why we're going to ultimately convert it into a mask is uh, the hair, the little bits of hair. I want to have uh, a little bit more of a complicated selection there than is possible just with the basic selection tools. So here again, um, hold down the option key, switch to subtract from the selection, and it's this shoulder here that might be the most problem. And over here by the eye, I want that little tiny bit of eyelash and a little bit more of the hair up here. So this is something I am going to kind of fine tune when I uh, click on select and mask and when I'm in that dialog. But again, I wanna get this as close as I possibly can before I jump to that. Now, you'll notice I did this by selecting the background. You could go in and, and do it entirely by selecting uh, you know, the, the figure rather than the background. I just tend to like to work this way and often when the background's a solid color, it is does become the easiest way to go about it. Okay, so I have my basic selection in place. I'm going to click on Select and Mask. And you can see here it's given me a cutout, so the figure is not visible. But what I can see here, which I don't notice, didn't notice before I selected it and masked, is that I have this little line here of area in the figure that's not that's not removed. So the quick select tool is still available in select and mask. It's one of a very limited number of, of tools. So you can actually fine tune your selection here. Um, and again, the default is add to a selection. Whoops. So I want to subtract from a selection. And again, you can do this by, you can do this by going in and holding down the option key. I keep on forgetting to do when I'm talking. So there I've added that to the selection. 
Now I actually want the figure to be selected. So the first thing I'll do here before I go any further is click on invert. So now um, that looks pretty good. Uh, there are a couple of different view modes here. So you can see with the selection outlines, the marching ants. You can see it with a red overlay and the red overlay actually helps you see that there's some areas where it's not maybe the greatest selection around the hair and down here around the shoulder. Uh, you can see it on black. You can see it on white. And again, now this really kind of, sh on white, you can really see how rough the selection is here. Uh, you can see it in black and white. And black and white uh, is maybe the, the clearest way to kind of see how rough your edges are. And remember, we want to eventually take this selection outline and convert it into a solid graphic. Uh, so a graphic representation of the shape in Illustrator. We can also see it on layers. So again, you know, sometimes this is going to be the different options are going to be more helpful. Uh, here, when you're working in black and white, one of the handy things you can do is switch to the brush mode. And the brush tool allows you to kind of go in and just you're paint, essentially you're painting with white. So in black and white mode, you can use this to kind of fine tune areas that should be straight. So I could have actually done this with that little line that was there. I could have uh, edited it using this mode as well. Uh, I don't think that one's great. Uh, you can also, if we look at onion skin, uh, that kind of gives me an idea about these edges here. So obviously here, that was a mistake. So I would switch to subtract from selection and go in and just kind of select that. So I can just move back and forth between different options. Now these edges are something I want to really clean up. So I am going to use the edge detection. And here you can see as I increase the radius, it creates this kind of soft feathery edge where it's only partially selected. And that is gonna be great for the hair edges to blend them in with a new background. Obviously 250 pixels is way too high a setting for that. So I'm gonna dial that back down. And here, again, this is something that you wanna be very, use a very small value for. I think I'm gonna go with five pixels. You can also click on the smart radius. And now I want to fine tune this by going in and using a couple of the detection options here. So this tool, uh, the second one down, it's actually the um, edge detection brush. And you can use that to just kind of go in and paint over your edges. And that will help you create a little bit more of this area of partial selection. So here, this is kind of, uh, I can go in and just get some more of those little, odd little strands of hair. Um, here, I obviously bit into the hair a little bit too much. So switch back to the subtract option. And again, uh, this is a matter of kind of fine tuning it. So you're gonna want to um, add, subtract this, um, this little, uh, Eyelash, I took away too much there. Maybe this shoulder might be an area that needs a little bit of adjustment as well. But again, this is just to bring back some of the subtle, subtlety around that, that hair. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to have every little stray hair in place. I just want some of them so that, you know, we have, have a few loose ends there. And again, you can always switch back and forth between the subtract option and the add option. You can switch to black and white to get a, a better idea. And you can see some of that, the hair edge is definitely in place now. The eyelash may be a little bit abrupt and could be smoothed over a little bit. Um, you can look at the overlay. Sometimes that's a more helpful way to look at it. Here I can see I've got a, maybe a few bunches of hair. I don't think it's terribly crucial that I, I have those included, but I mean, it's gonna, every little bit helps, right? 
and switch back and forth between the add and subtract options to just kind of fine tune those edges. And again, this isn't like a, the paintbrush, which will just kind of include everything or get rid of everything. This is more selective. It's looking for that edge and it's trying to add those stray little bits in. Now here, this shoulder I, I feel isn't perfect, but I, actually I don't think this will help with that. Actually, that's not bad. It's a little bit better. And again, you can keep on switching back and forth between different view options to see which one is going to kind of give you the best idea of how that's looking. So it looks pretty good. Um, here, there might be a couple, you know, I, I know I don't want any transparency uh, this far into the head. I just want that transparency on the edges so I can go in and just kind of fill in those little black areas here. And I think that looks pretty good. So now I can um, choose how I want to jump back into, into the regular Photoshop workspace. So here um, I'm gonna select de decontaminate colors, new layer with layer mask. And that way I, I still have a backup of my original layer. So click OK, and here I can see my, my new layer. I have a gradient background that has already been created. So I'm going to turn that on and look at those edges. Uh, I can see maybe a couple of places where it still needs a little bit of adjustment right here. It looks a little abrupt here, like someone took a chunk out of his head. Uh, I can go back in and edit it. Just click on the layer mask click on select and mask and uh, here I'm going to go back in with um, edge detection turn on smart radius and get a little bit more of those edges here because this is a layer mask I've been working on um, I just want to output to layer mask I click OK um, I can see I'm, I'm back to my regular layer mask now with the layer mask, of course, the selection is saved. I can disable it or uh, bring it back. Uh, and this gray is actually the from the decontaminate colors. So I'm going to say that was probably a mistake to set that. It probably would be a better looking uh, image without that. 